I was pretty good at math ever since I can remember, but <laughs> not good at math the way most people like think of measuring it. Right. So when I was a kid, I loved solving puzzles and problem solving. I started playing football in high school. My father was a uh, collegiate football player at the <coughs> University of Alberta, so I wanted to try it out. And I was not bad at it. And <laughs> <laughs> I think there is a lot of pressure to specialize, and uh, I think less so in the States, even more so in certain other countries, but still in the States, there's pressure to specialize earlier and earlier so that you can try to become better at whatever you're doing. And, you know, from a uh, societal point of view, well, this formula kind of makes sense a little bit if you want to try to, you know, optimize overall societal performance. But from a personal point of view, I think there's a great benefit to having some breadth about yourself. And even if there's something that you're passionate about and you love, if there's other things you're interested in, I think still spending time on those things leads to a more enriched life and just actually helps the other thing you're doing. Because sometimes too much time and too much focus, and the worst thing is too much pressure, can be even detrimental. You know, do you ever feel like there's some connection between what you do uh, on the football field and what you're studying? I know now there's a big push for sports analytics and really integrating a lot of those ideas into sports. Do you like? You know, think about that while you're playing offensive line, or is that <laughs> is that uh, something? Or I mean, you know, you talked about how one kind of helps the other. I'm sure it's not that like direct, but mm -hmm. do you feel like there is some kind of overlap between both of those two parts? Yeah. So I don't know how many football players we have in the crowd. We have a few. How many people play go. football? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So thinking about math on the football field would get me. Kill. <laughs> I would be like carted off on a stretcher very, very quickly. I mean, when you're playing football, for those of you who like haven't done it ever before, it's it's a highly instinctual thing. There's no thinking. There's no real decision making. The decision making process is implicit, just based off your instincts. You're not consciously saying this versus this. Your body is doing these things based off instinct. So what do your teammates think about you doing math and your math mm -hmm. course mates think about you playing football? Are they pretty supportive? Uh, I think my, so in college, my football teammates, they thought it was really cool <laughs> and it was like interesting and they wanted to like try to talk to me about math and understand what I was doing. Pro football teammates don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a... Uh, it's a job, like it's a profession, you need to like do your job. And uh, it's more or less, guys don't care what you do in the off season. I mean, whether, let's be realistic, good or bad. Guys more or less don't really care what you do in the off season, as long as you, know, you don't get in too much trouble. You train, you come back ready to play, and ready to help the team win. Do you have a moment that you really felt like your most proud of in terms of math, like a breakthrough moment for you where you're like, wow, I'm really good at this, or I feel really proud of my accomplishment in this? I think the moment mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to pursue it further, I was an undergrad at Penn State. At the time, I was majoring in aerospace engineering. Why? Because I didn't really know what I wanted to major in, and my mom, like, bless her soul, she is like the best mom you'll ever meet, <laughs> but like all overbearing moms, she said, you know, John, you're so good at math, you're so good at physics, you need to be a rocket scientist. <laughs> and she just like decided this, and she was like, this is what you're majoring in. So I did, and uh, I was taking a course in uh, ordinary differential equations, and we were uh, solving an ODE, and in this process of solving an ODE, we ended up with a uh, fifth order polynomial that we needed to find the roots of. And uh, Jake, what's interesting about fifth order polynomials? Uh, there's no closed form solution by radicals. There's no closed form solution by radicals. So he puts this on the board and he asks us to try to find the roots. And you know, he waits. 
for like 30 seconds and this is him kind of doing a like you know fun little side note well actually you can't there's no like algorithm to do this and well here I am you know bushy tailed like freshman raise my hand and he looks at me and he's like why are you raising your hand and he calls on me <laughs> and I tell him the five roots and then he looks at me even worse and he's like, well, how'd you do that? And I said, well, you know, I just kind of more or less factored it. And he said, you should be a math major. So I became a math major. <laughs> You're a math person and you somehow, for some reason, decide you want to read a paper of mine, which you do you. <laughs> Spectral bisection of graphs and connectedness. It's clean. There's not too, too much like high, high level stuff that you're going to look at and say, wait, what's this? What's that? And it's a very elegant proof and I recommend it. So I know you had mentioned before uh, the moment where you realized that you should pursue math further. Uh, was there a moment in which you decided you should pursue football further? And if so, what was that moment? Uh, by football further, you mean like pro football? Yeah. Okay, so my junior year just got done. I was all Big Ten at the time, and I was like really happy that I was all Big Ten. And I remember like we had one of our seniors, he graduated and he was entering the draft. And him and I, we were both linemen, we were talking to my offensive line coach. He was giving this guy advice about like, you know, things for the draft. And then he said to me, John, you need to stay one more year. It'll be really good for like your draft stock. You need to stay. And I didn't, I wasn't even really thinking about coming out early, and I wasn't like thinking about <laughs> that at all, but the fact that he like said that to me, signaled to me, maybe I should like start thinking about like the NFL, maybe this is like a real thing for me. I mean, as a football player, like it's everyone's like dream to like whatever you're passionate about, I think for most people, at least for me, to try to do it at the highest level. And so of course, playing in the NFL was a dream of mine, but I'm also like a, I'm a math person. I'm like a realistic person. So I know the stats, but at that point, it started feeling like this is a real thing that could be pretty likely. Yeah, particularly for someone who uses your brain as much as you do. Um, oh, this question. Uh, <laughs> <I'm ready. laughs> Come on. Research on concussions, especially in the NFL, does that give you pause? Uh, I've thought about it. I mean, I play a pretty dangerous sport. It's a good living, but it's a tough way to make a living. And uh, it's the type of thing where it's a sport I love, and I just, I love going out there and just a grinder and just, <laughs> and it's, just uh, it's just one of those things where I understand, probably might not be the best decision for me, but somehow just something like fundamental and primal in me just like feeds off of it. Just like feeds off of this like fundamental like primal emotion that you have when it's you lined up against someone and all this person wants to do is to just physically beat you down and like make you quit and all you want to do is do the same thing to him. And it's uh, it's a really it's a really interesting thing. And yeah, I if I have like sons, I would never want my son playing pro football. <laughs> I don't like I don't want like my children to have the life I ha I want my children to have like an easy life. And uh, yeah, but this is the life I like for me. So since you said anything, is Joe Flacco an elite quarterback? <laughs> the question, is Joe Flacco elite? To which he replies, well, he has a Super Bowl, so he must be elite. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to defer to. NFL training camp. <laughs> like, if you were like, 
John, you know what? You can either go and do training camp for six weeks, or we will cut off the little tip of your pinky, <laughs> and you can just show up the day training camp ends for week one and be in shape and like be and know all the plays and like you can just fast forward through it. Like, <laughs> how much are you gonna miss? Like a little tip. <laughs> What do you even use a pinky for? <laughs> this is a good, like, I don't even know. <laughs> I could do that like 10 times and I still have to pinky. Uh, yeah. What separates a good offensive tackle from any offensive tackle, in your opinion? Uh, consistency. So, from, offensive, from an offensive line play point of view, what separates, there's a difference between a good talent and someone who's, you know, a great talent or blessed, but more important in offensive line play is someone who has good consistency versus great consistency. So a good offensive tackle will block the defensive end most of the time, and, you know, sometimes he'll even have flashes of, like, greatness. But sometimes he'll get beat. A great offensive tackle doesn't have to have any flashes of greatness but never gets beat. So it's just a consistency issue. Uh, what was the most surprising thing you found out about the NFL when you joined it? And um, as a second question, um, what are your thoughts on creativity and how you get it? Okay, uh, I'll answer these questions quick. So first, the most like surprising thing about the <laughs> NFL is how long you're there, like every day. So like in college, there's like limits, well, supposed limits on like how long you can like <laughs> be doing football every day. In the NFL, like I really had to get used to the fact that, okay, this is an like eight to five job, like eight hour day, one hour lunch, and like I'm doing football related things for like a legit eight hour job. And your second question was creativity. And I don't remember exactly the details, but I will say I put creativity in very high esteem. And I think one of the kind of faults of a lot of kind of education structures, especially mathematically, is they push knowing certain things and knowing how to do certain things, but they don't push creativity, quantitative reasoning, and original thinking to think about how to do certain things, which I think is actually more important than knowing just like a formula for how to do this. Well, thanks everyone for coming out.